Hello, hello, and welcome once again to another edition of a Beatles podcast that we call Things We Said Today. This is the show where we focus on what's going on in the Beatle world news-wise. I'm Ken Michaels, host of uh, the Beatles syndicated radio show, Every Little Thing, and I'm being joined by my co-host, Mr. Beatles examiner himself, Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hi, everybody. I thought on uh, today's program, since it just happened, uh, we'd talk about Paul McCartney's performance for the Benefit concert for all the Sandy victims, uh, on the East Coast, uh, mainly uh, the New York, New Jersey area. The benefit concert that took place at Madison Square Garden called 12-12-12. And Paul McCartney, as I'm sure most of you know, closed the show. And he did a set of eight songs. And uh, why don't we just run off uh, the song titles, Steve, of the uh, songs that Paul did? The song titles were, he started out with Helter Skelter, which really sounded good. Then he went into Let Me Roll It, 1985, My Valentine, which he um, he added uh, Diana Krall on, on piano. Mm-hmm. Then there was Cut Me Some Slack, which is the title of the song he did with Dave Grohl and the uh, two, and uh, Chris no- Novoselic and, um, uh, from uh, Nirvana. And then I've Got a Feeling, and then he uh, closed with Live and Let Die, and then he introduced Alicia Keys, who did Empire State of Mind. Right. Now, my first question to you would be, and I find this probably the most interesting thing about um, Paul's set list, was his song selection. What did you think of what Paul chose to do? Well, he, uh, obviously in a case like this where he's only got a short time, he's going he's gonna to go for something you know, really powerful and, and you know, that packs a wallop, and that's really what he did. Starting out with Helter Skelter is unusual, but I, it sounded wonderful. I remember sitting there listening to it, and I really liked what he did. Mm. All the songs that he did, maybe with the exception of Blackbird, were really, really good. Blackbird kind of brings the mood down a little bit, and I think in a, I'm kind of wonder why he did that in a case like that. But he, he did say during the show he was dedicating it to the Sandy victim. So you know, I guess that kind of goes along with that. Mm-hmm. But the song selection, I thought the song selection was great. The thing that really impressed me that I was sitting there watching the show, when I was watching the show with my wife, I was sitting there saying, Live and Let Die, look, he looked like he really doubled up on the pyrotechnics. I could not believe the expl- number of explosions. And I, I mean, I've seen Live and Let Die live a couple of times, and I've seen it close up. A couple of times? <laughs> He's been doing it since... Uh, no, well, I'm saying know. in person I've seen it myself. Right. You know, I cannot recall a more smoke-filled <laughs> live and let die than the one he did at Madison Square Garden the other night. I yeah. mean, that was just astounding. It was really amazing. You could be right about that. It was, I mean, it, it just... It, I could not believe the number of explosions. I mean, I've seen... You know, it, I mean, there have been shows where he's cut back on the explosions a little bit, you know, I guess for various reasons, whatever they are. But he did not cut back on it. I mean, he really let the let the crowd have that song. Hmm. And it was, I thought, it, it sounded it sounded and looked fantastic. He really did. Well, i got to tell you, I was extremely impressed with the set list here, mainly due to the fact that this was anything but predictable. And, and I hate predictability. That's true. That's true. You, that's a that's a great point. That yeah, it really wasn't. Um, I know that there are some people on Facebook, as I do spend a lot of time reading Facebook and what mm-hmm. Beatle fans have to say. There are some people who are saying, "Please, Paul, don't do Let It Be again." You know, don't do Hey Jude again. I heard those that are, too. I saw I saw those comments before before the show, and uh, and surprisingly, he didn't. Those are the songs that you expect him to do. Mm-hmm. But he chose not to do those, and for the most part, not with all songs, but he chose to rock, which is what I think people wanted. But the thing that surprised me the most, and don't get me wrong, I love the selection here because I've followed his career and I know all of his material. I would love for him to go deep into his catalog and play whatever he wants. But for this particular situation, you're dealing with more casual fans than hardcore fans who are following every Paul McCartney album. And I'm thinking, 
You know, as much as Band on the Run is the most successful album he's had in his solo career, not everybody out there knows Let Me Roll It. Not everybody in the audience knows 1985. They should. Yeah, they <laughs> they're should. great songs. Mm-hmm. You know, and they have gotten airplay th- through the years, but they're not the songs that radio has continued to play from Paul. You know, I'm sure that er- there were more people that probably would have preferred something safer, like Let It Be or Hey Jude, or a rocker like I Saw Her Standing There, which is what I was kind of expecting him to do, maybe as one of the last songs. True. Because it's such an iconic rocker, and everybody knows it, and everybody sings along with it. You would expect those kind of songs to come from Paul McCartney. But instead, he chose to do these songs, and I'm very proud of him for doing it. But I'm just wondering if it was the right arena for doing this. Because, like I said, this was more a casual fan watching this show. He was the last artist. It was about 12.30 at night. I'm sure a lot of people were tired. They were ready to go home. They wanted to rock out. And a lot of these songs, I think, the average fan wouldn't know. And then he went into My Valentine, which is a beautiful song. And I'm glad he's proud of it. And I'm glad he's showcasing it. And I'm glad he brought Diana Krall out. You know, it's a great song. It's a great ballad. But the average person out there doesn't know it, outside of the people who follow Paul religiously. Mm. You know um, what I'm saying? So... You know, I, I was very shocked at the set list. I'm very glad he did it. But, you know, I would think that probably for the average person going to see this show, they probably were expecting more of the Beatle classics. And maybe if you're going to do some of his solo stuff, do Band on the Run or, well, Live and Let Die is such a great song live and it's and it's a classic and it's one that he should do probably with every concert. Well, I think I, that one, I mean, I think has become almost something that everybody expects him to do hmm. because of the because of the you know he puts on a show i think one song that that i love that he added to the set that he didn't do was mrs vanderbilt i love i loved that um you, you didn't expect that, him to do that at this show no well, i mean if you're going to do a 1985 you know i mean it's just, it's about the same familiarity with 1985, I think. Because it's the same album. Right. But, I mean, it's the same, you know, it has the same level of recognition. And and I actually like how, you know, that's so, the chorus on the thing is, is so melodic. Mm. I love, uh, you know, and, and he's taken he's taken it uh, to such a, it's become such a great part of his set list. Right. When he does it. But that's neither here nor there. Um, I think Blackbird was the only one that I was kind of wishing he hadn't done, but, you know, I I understood why he did it, and that's fine. I'm not going to really argue on anything he did there. I mean, they were all good. They were all... As a fan, and as someone who studied his whole history in his catalog, yes, I love it. I'm just thinking about for this particular purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if, if the average person who went to see that concert really wanted those songs. You know, I, I'll bet you, and, and even with the Beatles material, he didn't play hits. Mm. Helter Skelter, even though it's well known, was not a single. I've got a feeling was not a hit. You know, know, Blackbird I, was I, not a hit. I, I think I, can I can I say I think you're nitpicking there a little bit, Ken, because I think it's I think it's I you know I, I think he has gotten to the point now where everybody knows you know pretty much all of his songs, so I don't think there's a whole lot of yeah, you know, you can say Paul. You wish Paul would go deep, but I don't think he really went deep on any of those, except for my, maybe my Valentine, which you know probably a lot of people have not heard. Kisses from uh, Kisses on the Bottom. People who aren't really familiar with that will, you know, will wonder, you know, what that was all about. But otherwise, I don't think there was a, you know, and also of course the the, the song with the guys from Nirvana, which you know it, it is a discussion topic all by itself. But again, I, I'm not complaining at all. I don't okay. want you to think that I'm doing that because okay. I'm very pleased. <laughs> and also, one other thing that I applaud Paul for, and and I, I hate to always make comparisons, but when I heard about this concert, obviously your mind has to think about the concert for New York since it was the same venue. It was a, a charity show over something that was so enormously tragic. And you had some of the same performers on the bill as as Paul and there's nothing here that Paul did that he did 
uh, in, in 2001, you know, instead of repeating some of the same songs. If you look at what some of the other artists did, like Billy Joel, who I thought was phenomenal, uh, New York State of Mind, which you kind of expect them to do, but there were some of the same songs. The yeah. Who did some of the same songs, but everything that Paul did, he didn't do in 2001. So I, yeah. I, I enjoyed that aspect of it. The, I didn't think his set, uh, you know, for the concert for New York was as nearly as good as this one. I thought this one was much better all around. But, I mean, I, the, uh, the show overall, I think, went down a lot better um, this time around. Although, but, I mean, I, I, you know, there's parts of that show that I have loved, you know, and I have listened to several times or many times since. Hmm. Uh, I thought The Who was fantastic in that show. Adam Sandler was great in that show. David Bowie was great in that show. Uh-huh. Um, so, I mean, there, there's a lot of... Uh, the Stones were great in that show. In fact, I think the Stones were better in that show than they were in this one. But um, My only complaint about the Stones this time was that they only had two songs. Yeah. And I don't that know was why. kind of a surprise. I, it, but then again, they were, pl- you know, they were, pl- they were a last-minute ad, and they were also, you know, they were also playing in the area, and I think probably that was part of the consideration. Yeah, I don't want to speculate that maybe the Stones limited themselves to two songs, but, you know, something obviously happened there, and, and I'm glad they were there, and they should have been there. Because so, uh, if they hadn't been there, God knows what, what would have happened on the Internet as far as, you know, the criticism that they would have gotten. So I'm glad they were there. But, um, you know, overall, I thought the show was, was really good. What did you think of Cut Me Some Slack? I liked it because it I, I like when Paul jams and he has that real edgy vocal. And it's something that a lot of the mainstream public, they don't get to see that from Paul McCartney. I was very surprised. I did not expect... A, I, I knew, you know, obviously we all knew this was coming. because Well, it, it, it only it, leaked out that day. Yeah, it had been leaked all over the place. And, and at first, you know, there was the... You know, is this really going to happen? And I, in in fact, initially when I heard the reports about the, you know, trying to make it as a Nirvana thing, I was going, no, that doesn't seem right. It really doesn't. You know, it sounds like somebody's kind of wishful thinking. But then as as more reports started filtering in, I started going, oh, okay, maybe some, you know, maybe that's what this is, uh, or maybe there is something to to that after all. When you heard the song, there was no doubt. You know, there was absolutely no doubt. And I have to say that, you know, I was surprised only because, you know, this is not something of the type of song that I expect from Paul. You know, it sounded like a helter skelter thing, uh, kind of, and mm-hmm. that was kind of that was kind of fun. And uh, I, you know, and I can't wait to. Uh, well, I ordered the I ordered the iTunes album, and um, I can't wait to hear that. Again, although I obviously I'd go on iTunes or uh, YouTube and hear it now, but I can't wait to hear, you know, a better, uh, better produced version of that live cut. Right. And in fact, I can't wait to hear a lot of that stuff because I thought the music overall was really good. I thought that they they did some there was some great stuff there. Yeah, I will say one thing, and I, I increasingly find it more and more difficult to to be critical not only of Paul or, or any or, or Ringo or any veteran artist, because to me, any of these people who are still around and healthy and they're still productive making new music or performing, I'm just grateful for that. But one of the few things, if any, that I wish Paul would do that he hardly ever does is he never just jams or does other people's material on stage with that artist. Mm-hmm. You know, other people will get on stage with Paul and sing Beatles songs with him, but he doesn't go on stage and and sing another artist's material with them. Uh, okay. But I'm saying, like, uh, I've seen footage of there's a U2 performance where Mick Jagger joined him on stage and did one of their songs. Mm-hmm. That's a really cool thing to do. It's showing respect for, it's, it's, it's showing a nod to the other artist. It's you know, taking, that's, that's, it's, that's actually something that I've, but not only about Paul, but about Ringo. And it seems like they don't, either of them, get out and do, uh, show off their own um, instrumental chops 
and Paul, I mean, Paul's case, Paul's a great guitarist. You know, he's a great bassist. He's obviously a great bassist, as we all know, but mm. he also plays great guitar. But Ringo's drumming never gets showcased other than in the All-Star Band, and I've always wished that he would do a, a drum pro- project kind of like Bill Kreutzmann of the Grateful Dead has done and Mickey Hart has, has done, Yeah, you know, those kind of things. And because uh, I, you know, everybody knows how good a drummer Ringo is, and even Ringo, you know, has talked, you know, talked about it and demonstrate. And a couple of times, few times that he's demonstrated his drumming, I love that, and I wish both of them would do it, show show off their instrumental chops a little bit more. Right. Now, I agree with you. I mean, I just wish that you know, in this particular case, Paul would do it. So when he did something like this with the Nirvana guys, I was very pleased. I was saying I wish he'd do more of this. Yeah. Because he's earned the right, he earned the right after the Beatle breakup to do whatever he wanted to do. And um, I just wish he'd get up on stage and join other artists and do their material once in a while. You take somebody like Billy Joel, and the two of them have performed together on stage, but it's always Paul's music. Right. (laughs) You know, Paul doesn't sing a Billy Joel song with Billy Joel. So I wish that he would do more of that, but this is also something completely different because it's a an entirely new song. Right. But uh, I'm glad that he did it. And I just think that, you know, Paul is one of the greatest vocalists we've ever had in the history of music. Right. He's the one of the most versatile vocalists. He's got so many different voices, and he's got a very great, edgy rock and roll voice. And the general public, who really doesn't study Paul, they know him more for his poppy stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that music, but they don't really know how well he can rock, especially with his with his vocals. So when he does Helter Skelter on stage, I'm very pleased that he does that, and I wish that he would do more of that, you know, on stage. I wish he'd cut loose a little bit too, just on not only on on Helter Skelter, but just cut loose in general uh, and allow himself to do things like cut me some slack, yeah, a little more often. And um, there's a website that has gone up, and, uh, and we're just kind of coming off the you know the first couple of days of information, so things may be a little more there may be a little more knowledge out there about this by the time this airs. But there's a website called www.cutmesomeslack.net where there's a 18 second preview of of a studio track. Um, I'm guessing the live version. Uh, I'm hoping the live version will be in the iTunes album that will probably be out by the time this airs. So that'll be that'll be fun to hear and and uh but um yeah, I mean it, it's great to hear him do things like that and he and, and I'm glad the the set list was was the way it was. You're you're correct that it was a, it was a good set list. Yeah, I will say one other thing about the set list and this is not meant to be a criticism, but there was a video that was posted online of Paul, this was before the concert, why he became involved in this. And the music that was played underneath it was the song Too Much Rain from Chaos and Creation in the Backyard. I don't know if you saw the video. No, I, I, actually, I did not see that video, but I, I think I heard about it. Yeah, and I actually thought that is the perfect song for Paul to do live where you can relate the subject matter in the song to what just happened. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it really adds a lot of poignancy to the concert when you've got material that in some way you can you can interpret as as having you can relate to what had just happened and i remember back with the concert for new york james taylor did fire and rain which given the circumstance of what had just happened took on a whole other meaning there you know and sometimes that's the beauty of certain songs and certain lyrics and poetry that it can have different interpretations at different times but i think too much rain given what the subject matter is about trying to have hope in your life when there's despair you know smile Mm -hmm. when your eyes are burning you know laugh when your eyes are filled with pain you know people if they hear that even though that's a song that the general public doesn't know it wasn't a hit i think that could have worked really well i wish there was a song like that in a set list that really applied to what had happened. And I'm not saying this as a criticism. You well, know, I guess Empire, I'm, are you talking about Paul or just in general? I mean, Empire, from, from State Paul. Of Mind, Empire State of Mind does, New York State of Mind does. So, I mean, yeah, 
But sometimes well, you look for he, songs like that. Mm-hmm. And, and he did dedicate Blackbird to everybody, you know, to the to people struggling, as, as I recall what he says. That, in a, in a way, you know, goes along with that. So, I don't know. Okay. I don't. It, it, it's not. You know. I mean. I. I the set list is what it, what it was, and it was. It was. You know. It was great. My only. If if I had a, one criticism, I thought his voice sounded a little strained, and a little tired. But it was kind of late, and uh, it was actually later for you than it was for me. Yeah. <laughs> and as I posted on Facebook, I said this. This was one time. Normally, th- the three-hour t- time delay, you know, bothers me. But it didn't this time. I was really kind of glad. You know, it ended here at at uh, ten o'clock, and I was kind of glad. Mm. <laughs> so, and actually, our DVR cut off. We 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 had been DVRing it on VH1 Classic, and it cut off at ten o'clock, right in the middle of Cut Me Some Slack. It was like. Ah, <laughs> so we had it to cut off at that moment. Yes, yes, it did. It didn't and carry the to, whole concert. No, well, it, it it had gone five hours, and it and it was right across ten the ten the ten o'clock hour, and it and uh, cut me some slack. All of a sudden, shut off. I mean, it it the the DVR shut down. It was like, oh my god, I got got it going, and I got the rest of the show. Right, but it was like it, it was it was such bad timing it was the worst possible time for that to happen hmm. oh, i'll well. tell you one last thing here mm-hmm. which was a i gotta tell you it was a slight disappointment for me and again here i am comparing it to the concert for new york i was kind of expecting at the very end of the show for all the performers to come out on stage and join in and sing along on something and instead it was paul introducing alicia keys which, yeah, which I was to me kind was of surprised at that too, actually, and that kind of that was kind of weird. But on the other hand, he brought out you know all the all the uh, firefighters, from, yeah, and the firefighters and the policemen and everything. And I and if anything, you know, the tribute should have been to them. So I that you know when I I thought about that at first, and then I I looked at that and I went, no, those guys deserve it more. So that's fine. That's that's fine. Okay. It's just a shame in a way because, as Mick Jagger had said, this is the largest uh, group of, uh, how did he word it, the veteran British artists yeah, and <laughs> that have ever been. Some, he's getting some heat for saying, if it rains in London, you got to come over and help us. And, and I think, I mean, that was just kind of an off-the-head off the, off the head comment. And, and, of course, you know, people are seizing on it and going, ah, Mick, you shouldn't have said that. Now, you know, come on. <laughs> There are worse things to worry about than that. Right. But it would have been nice to see the Stones and the two surviving members of The Who and Paul on stage and Roger Waters and just, you know, those British artists, as well as Billy Joel and Bruce Springsteen and everybody else. You know, it would have been great to see that at the end. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things. I I saw a comment from somebody on Facebook. They said they wish David Gilmore had come out with Roger Waters. Somebody else suggested they wished... Paul had mentioned Ravi Shankar. That's uh, true. That's another important thing. I mean, not only because he passed away, and we just found out about it that day, but when you think about the irony of it all, I mean, Ravi Shankar was the reason why the concert for Bangladesh happened. Right. Because he went to George Harrison and asked him to do something about it, and that was really the first fully established charity concert, and it was at Madison Square Garden. And 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 somebody else suggested, and to a lesser extent, you know, he, they could have also mentioned George, and they didn't do that either. You know, I don't want to make a big deal out of either of that. I think the Shankar thing, though, should have happened. I think that's that's a very good point, and I wish somebody had thought of that. And in case, by the way, in case anybody didn't hear, Robbie's going to get a uh, lifetime Grammy. That was announced the day he died, <laughs> or the day the news of his death came out, which I think is... is really kind of that's too bad that he's not going to be around for that right um but um i don't know did you ever have any contact with him did you ever meet no him? i never did we i he played my junior college had the smart to put on a concert by him in either 67 or 68 i can't remember what year it was and i went to the show we waited i, I mean it was a long show i think it was two two and a half three hours and i actually Got went and ran around to the back back of the stage. I mean, this was at a junior college, and there wasn't any, you know, it wasn't any big deal about security. 
and actually talked to him in both Hala Raka after the show. Mm. And I asked him about George, and uh, he was very cool about answering questions. That was, that was uh, you didn't have any problem talking about George at all. Wow. Did you write about that? Um, I didn't mention, I didn't write about that in the wake of his death. I probably, you know, I don't, I'm, to be honest, I'm not the type of person that, that writes about those, you know, writes about my personal experiences and boasts about that, but I just thought it was, it was it, you know, it was worth mentioning now because of that, because uh, he was such a nice guy. I probably should have. Hmm. Oh, well. You get it here. <laughs> you, you get the scoop here. <laughs> but anyway, overall, um, really very impressed with the very set impressed. list from Paul. And um, the overall thing is, you know, the cause and what they were there for the reason why they were there and i think that's that right. that's the bigger picture right and you know the fact that they got all these people together in a in such a short time and i mean they had they had t-shirts they had everything uh, I, I ran pictures of some of those you know of, of one of the t-shirts they were selling they went completely you know i don't know if they did that in, in you know with the concert for new york in 2001 but they sure did it this time mm. um so, I mean, they had, uh, things have come along. We have come to the point now where technology allows us to do things almost instantly. So, you know, if you if you say you're putting on a show in two weeks, you know, the shirts will be there. Yeah. You know, it's it's the way it was, and that's what they, that's what they did. And, and when you uh, think about all the TV channels that ran it. That was astounding. That was amazing. And it was in theaters, and it was in, you know, it was around the world. It was streamed. It was streamed on the internet. And they were saying there there was an estimated two billion people watching. Right, right. I mean, uh, yeah, I can imagine. And you could have gone into a theater for a kid's admission to see it, you know, a child's admission to uh, see it in a theater. And that actually would have been pretty impressive to see it on a big screen. Right. Like you were there. You know, that would have been fun. That would have been a long uh, five hours. Long five hours, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. A lot of popcorn. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, definitely a great performance from Paul and the band. And yeah. they have not, there has not been any talk yet of a DVD or, or a, well, there is, you know, the iTunes tracks, um, but we haven't heard about, you know, video or, and uh, physical CD, but that, you know, obviously with what happened with the concert for New York, you know, it's very likely that, you know, all those things will happen. Right. And we'll have we'll have that eventually, too. So. And if anybody wants to make a donation to the Robin Hood Charity Foundation, they can go to, do you have the website? It's 121212concert.org. And if you also, if you buy, if you order the the iTunes album, the, those proceeds, and I believe the, the price was twelve ninety nine. those proceeds also go to the, to the um, to the concert to the to the foundation to the Robin Hood Foundation, which is handling the the um, the efforts to uh, help the victims. So I'm, uh, but I, I pre-ordered the iTunes thing the night of the show, so I got I got excited. I wanted to hear it early. Okay, so that puts a wrap on this show. And if you would like to get in touch with us, we have a brand new email address where you can write to us, which happens to be. Things We Said Today Radio Show at gmail.com. That's right. And we have our own Facebook page for Things We Said Today. I have my own Facebook page at Ken Michaels. And you have your own. And, and yes, uh, Steve Marinucci. And, and also all the Beatles examiner and examiner all the columns. Examiner, all my examiner columns have their own little pages. Yep. And you can also find out more about me and my radio program on my website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com. And uh, one of the great things about my website is there are more and more interviews being posted. And there's a lot of stuff to uh, sink your teeth into with people who are connected to the Beatles. And in addition to that, there's also trivia every single week, and you can win great prizes just by playing along on my website, KenMichaelsRadio.com. So with that, we just uh, want to bring the show to a close. And I'm Ken Michaels, being joined by Steve Marinucci, saying thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. See you next time.